the Bible tells us this year as we clap and as we shout, God ascends in the midst of His people. Amen. And it is in the worship. Yung paglakas ng palakpak po natin, di ba pag tayo nasa concert, oh, talaga naman. May isa akong napanood na, na, na comment in one of the, the concert ng isang Korean. Uh, sabi po niya, he was, she was not able to sing and perform that much kasi grabe yung hiyawan ng mga tao, hindi niya namarinig ang kanyang sarili. Because this is our club signifies yung excitement natin, amen? Kung gaano natin kagusto yung, 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 yung presence ng taong ating pinala, pinapalakpakan, amen? Pero paano na lang this year? This year is a year of ascending. Amen? Sabi ng Painon, it is through our claps and our shout that the Lord will ascend. Amen? Kaya naman po, paari po ba nating palakpakan ulit ang Panginoon? <laughs> Hallelujah! Uh, let us continue to stir up our hearts and our spirit. And this is the way we welcome the presence of God. We don't clap because it's a routine na pag may pupunta sa harap, oh, welcome! Diba? But whenever we clap, it is an offering of praise sa Panginoon. And this year, alam ko lahat po tayo excited because we have finally received the word last Sunday. And today and this year we proclaim it is an ascending year. Amen? Kaya naman po in the last few days, We've been talking about ascending, ascending. Yung iba nag-change ng profile. We changed our profile for the first time. And we declare and we post it. Kasi sabi ng Painan, this is when we receive something sa Panginoon. We write it in the tablet of our hearts, in the doorpost. And this is to remind us on how and what God is going to do. And alam ko po, lahat tayo excited. Sino pong excited? Ascending 2023. In the last few days, nag-uusap-usap. Uy, mag-business na tayo. Ascending 2023. Marahil yung iba nagtatanong, should we invest now? Ate, ano? Mag, mag-resign ako. Mag-business. I have to do this. I have to do that. And marami pong mga bagay we start to think. Kasi nagkakaroon po tayo ng pangarap. Nagkakaroon po tayo ng pag-asa. And so even the church, this year, God is really stirring up our hearts to really work on how we can really ascend together as one church. Kaya naman po sabi ni Sister Maricel kanina, we will be launching a lot of things in the church because we believe that as we ascend, we must first ascend in the spirit. Amen? It is not to start from the, from the outward things, on the physical things. Ate, ma, ano? Mag-invest na ako sa ganito? Mag-business? Mag-busy sa business? But you know, I believe, well, I was praying to God, Lord, what do you want the church to do? How can we as a church ascend and really not miss yung message mo this year? And the Lord brought me in Acts chapter 2. And God wants us to learn from these people. At wala na pong ibang tao na pwede po nating uh, mapag learnan on how we can ascend but through the people and the disciples of the Lord and how God raised them up, how God allowed them to ascend as they served the Lord. Let us open our Bibles in Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. And let us see here on how God works. Alam nyo kanina po, na-excite ako kasi we were rushing to come in the church kanina. But suddenly we slowed down kasi may dalawang bata na nagbabike sa harapan namin. Alam nyo yun, na inis na inis kami, ang bagal-bagal, ang ginagawa nitong dalawang bata. And suddenly the two child suddenly lift their hands. Alam nyo yun? And alam mo yung action natin ng Sunday na lumilipad sila. Hindi lang yung isa, but even the one driving the bicycle, pareho po silang gumanon. And so, grabe talaga, I, I felt God is reminding us talaga, how would these people, these children know now we are talking about soaring high, ascending high. Kaya po, nung kami, I don't know if na feel na makasamahan ko, but I am so blessed and I am so touched seeing these two children na gumagawa ng prophetic gesture natin to fly. And so I know God is emphasizing. God really wants to confirm His words sa atin. Kaya po, let's be excited. Acts chapter 2, this is a long chapter, but we'll see how we can um, 
shorten ang ating message. But definitely, this is the experience of the early church, especially the disciples of the Lord in receiving the Spirit of God. Sabi po dito, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how it is that each of us hears them in our native language, Parsians, and so on, so on. And they said, we hear them declaring the wonders of God, in verse 11, in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles. However, uh, but miracles, wonders, and signs which yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan for men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. And verse 29, fellow Israelite, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne, seeing what was to come. He spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Lord, we thank you for your word, for we know what you did in the past. 
you will do it in our time and even greater than what you have done. And Lord, today we open our hearts as we receive your word that we shall ascend with you in the spirit, Lord, and everything will follow. Lord, thank you for your presence in this room. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So this is the story of the first ever Pentecost. And the first time the church of God was filled and touched and powered by the Holy Spirit. At matindi po yung kanilang experience. But before this experience, I want you to know that before we read this story, the people of God on those times, the disciples, sabi po dito, they are in a room. Amen? Ano po yung ginagawa nila dito? One is they pray together, but second is they are hiding together. Because on those times, Jesus died. And it was already 50 days after the death and the resurrection of Christ. And after he rose up for 40 days, he spoke to his, to his disciples. And he began to encourage them. And he says, you are the church. And even at the end, Sabi po ng Panginoon in Matthew chapter 28, I'm going to use you to disciple the nations. I'm going to raise you up. And that is what God says. And there will be revival in the land. And I am going to use you. Yun po ang promise ng Panginoon. But what does the disciple feel during those times? Ano po yung sitwasyon ng mga Israelite? Nung mga disciples and the early church, nung mga panahon na ito, on those times as they have received the Holy Spirit, actually the disciples were really so discouraged. The disciples were in their lowest point of their lives. Why? Jesus, who has been with them, Jesus, the powerful master, Jesus who has been providing for them, Jesus who has done miracles and has been teaching and supporting them in their life journey is already dead. And he arose, but he ascended to heaven and they were left on their own. Okay? Ito po yung time. And then when Jesus actually gave him the word, gave them the the, the word and the hope that you will become great and I will greatly use you. Pero, nung mga panahon po na yon, wala na pong kasama ang mga disciples. Alam mo yung, alam mo yung minsan sinabihan ka, okay, we, let's do a business. Kaya natin to, pero suddenly iniwan ka. Yeah? And, he, and this person who left you is expecting you to ascend, to rise up, and to accomplish yung work. But the, but the disciples, nung mga panahon na yon, yes, they saw Jesus ascended. But they were so discouraged. They were so low in the spirit. Why? We need to understand where they're coming from. They betrayed Jesus. After the years that Jesus has taught them and spoke to them, they betrayed Jesus. Yung unang yabang nila, even Peter, nawala. At ipinagkanulo nila ang Panginoon. And so this is the state, the spiritual state of the, of the disciples no mga panahon na yun. That though God is saying to them, I'm going to raise you up, but their spirit cannot accept it. God loved the church no mga panahon na yun, But the people na pinag-entrustan po niya ng church, they were so full of fear. Why? Dahil mga panahon na yon hinahanap lahat ng disipulo ng Panginoong Yesus. And there, we, there, was, there was persecution in the church. And people were trying to kill. Kaya nga po si, si Peter noong mga panahon na yon uy, di ba ikaw yung kasama ni Jesus? Ay, hindi, hindi. Because he knew exactly kung anong mangyayari sa kanila. Because on those times, the early church were very persecuted and yung life po nila was at stake. And so nandun po yung great fear, great discouragement. But God says, I'm going to use you to establish my kingdom. Just like today. Sabi po ng Pino sa atin, we will ascend. You need to ascend. Pero Lord, paano ako mag-ascend? 
nawalan kami ng mahal sa buhay. Some, some may have lost their work. Sabi, sabi nila Mika kanina sa, sa power ministry nila, some have already abandoned their dreams. Some are very discouraged. We have lost people whom we love. We lost things in our lives. We have experienced a lot in the beginning pa lamang ng taon na iyon. Lord, how can we ascend? But it come here, you see, God is saying to us, it is not on our own might, nor our own strength, but God is saying to us, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why in chapter 1 of Acts, the Lord says, wait, because I'm sending the Holy Spirit, and I will give you power to witness and testify. Then na mga panahon po na iyon, even if the disciples knew Jesus, knew their calling, but they cannot believe that they can really do it because they don't have the power. They have that fear. Sabi nga po, even Jesus themselves, they were faithless people. And how can they ascend? Just like many of us, we may be asking, Lord, paano kami mag ascend my wife loses job, her job. Some of us have their own struggle. Yung health natin, we feel it's deteriorating. Lord, instead nga na ascending, we are descending. And some of you, some of us here, we meron tayong mga pinagdadaanan, meron tayong mga challenges, na instead that we are ascending, somehow we are descending in our life and our Christian journey. But the Lord says as we ascend, he will surely accomplish it. How? We will first ascend in the Spirit. And this is what happened to the disciples no mga panahon na yon. What happened when they stayed and they received the word of God that they need to wait. Suddenly, on the day of the Pentecost, they were all together in one place and there was this sound of a blowing wind. There is suddenly that sound Alam niyo, nasa room ka, wala sanang sound, yeah? But a sound broke through dun sa silence nila because during the sound, the disciples were hiding. Amen? Nakaloki po sila nung mga panahon na yun. They can even make a sound because they were all in fear. But suddenly, nung mga panahon na yun, as they hold on to the word of God, that the Lord says, wait for I am sending the Spirit. And it is the Spirit that will give you power to do whatever I have given and entrusted to you. And so what happens, there was this wind. And hindi lang po wind. There is this, uh, there is this sound and there is this wind that comes in the room. And lastly, there was a fire. And which is very impossible. Sa tinyo, may nag-ilaw-ilaw lang doon. Yeah? But the way the presence of the Holy Spirit was described, it was really a miracle and a wonder that happened. The wind came and the fire came. And these two were mixed together. It describes yung two great and powerful elements sa ating buhay bilang mga tao. And this is how the Spirit descended and come to the people and the disciples of God nung mga panahon na yun. First point I want to share is that we need to receive the Holy Spirit to ascend. Receive the Holy Spirit to ascend. The first thing the disciples experienced when Jesus ascended in heaven was they received the Holy Spirit. Bakit po ganun ka-importante yung Holy Spirit nakasama naman na nilang Panginoong Yesus? Hindi ba sapat na tayo na nampalataya sa Panginoong Yesus? But the Spirit, sabi po ng Panginoon mismo, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because our faith will be ablaze through and only through the power of the Holy Spirit. At noong mga panahon na yun, it came in the room and descended to each one of them. At ano po yung sinisignify nito? The wind signifies the breath of life. The breath of life. Bakit? Kahit po nung mga yun, they have faith. But their faith is dead. 
Amen? They have been taught by Jesus, but they didn't have the power to do anything. They have withdrawn. Wala po silang ability. They felt they didn't have the ability to do anything. And there is death in everything. Maging sa kanilang isip, maging po, wala na po silang desire. Some of them even went back to fishing. And there is death. But, sabi po dito, the Spirit of God blew and breathed upon them. The dry bones, yung kawalan po nila ng gana, their fears, all these things, na akala po, akala po nila, wala nang pag-asa, wala na pa ang Panginoong Yesus eh. But the Holy Spirit breathed life, breathed life in them. And even the tongues of fire came. And what is the tongues of fire signifies this is the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Lahat po ng agam-agam nila, lahat ng unbelief, even their fears na mga panahon na yon, it was being purified and consumed. And this is the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That maybe we begin to question, paano nga kami mag ascend Pero we are in this kind of situation. We are still, I mean, lahat inflation, dumating, ang daming problema, ang daming mga bagay na hindi po natin ina-expect. That is trying to put us and discourage us. Pero dito sabi po, when the Spirit will come, God will purify our hearts. God will consume all these doubts na ating pong kinakaharap or nararanasan. And what happens is that when they receive the power of the Holy Spirit, ang daming namangha. Have you seen? There was a change in their lives. Yung mga natatakot, yung mga nagtatago, those people who kept themselves silent in one room, suddenly they rose up and they spoke in tongues. They begin to speak in tongues. And this is just a fulfillment of the prophecy that God is going to use the early church to reach out for the nations. How can they do it? They don't speak the tongues. They don't know the language of other men. But suddenly when the Spirit of God came, even the most impossible thing, God gave it to them. And people were amazed. Almost 15 languages in one room. Chinese pa lang, hirap na hirap tayo, di ba? Have you ever, sino yung mga naka-enroll ng Chinese class natin? Kulang na lang, mapiga ang buong isip natin. But look at what the power of the Holy Spirit can do. It's not because the teacher came, but the Holy Spirit teach them this thing. And suddenly, they were able to speak 15 languages at the same time. At namangha ang mga devotee. Then, na mapanahon po na yan, po ay katatapos lamang ng Passover. And many nations come to Jerusalem, to Israel, to worship in the temple of God. But, no mga panahon po na yan, isang kamanghang-manghang bagay ang nakita at na-encounter po nila. Suddenly, in one room, they heard a lot of languages. They speak together because they receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Yung mga tahimik, yung mga fearful, suddenly they speak. Spoke. They revealed. Sabi po dito in verse, uh, verse 11, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our tongues. And they were perplexed. They were amazed. Yung mga disciples na marahil po nung puno po ng complain, Lord, bakit mo kami iniwan? Lord, asan ka? You even says, the Spirit will be upon us. Pero ten days na. The Spirit did not come. And these disciples have to wait. Have you ever experienced that in your life? God promised you a lot of things. Every year, God declares His message. But somehow in our lives, Lord, ano ba yan? Lahat kinlame ko, walang nangyari. And you know, the disciples have to wait for another ten days before they can receive the Holy Spirit. Pero alam niyo po, nung na-receive nila, nakalimutan nila lahat. Nakalimutan nila na, alam mo yun, wala na ang Panginoong Jesus. Hindi na nila kasama ang Panginoong Jesus. 
Nakalimutan nila na nagtatago sila. Nakalimutan nila that they have been oppressed. But they begin to have that courage and the boldness to speak and reveal themselves and reveal the glory of the Lord. For us to be able to ascend, we need to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it is the power in our lives that will teach us how to ascend. If we think, ah, kailan ko mag-aral ng mabuti, or kailan ko magpakayaman, so that I can really ascend. But in here, God says, without the Holy Spirit, we are like the disciples of Jesus. We cannot do anything. We, can, we may have been taught. They even walked with Jesus. They made and performed miracles with Jesus. They multiplied food, 5,000 loaves of bread and beyond. They have experienced that. But it's still they're still in their time that they experience powerlessness and defeated and defeat sa kanilang buhay but when the spirit came it brings life it enables them even the things they cannot do first receive the holy spirit to ascend and that second point as we ascend bakit nga po ba tayo mag-ascend why bakit po tayo nangangarap na mag-ascend ngayon Look at Peter. Sabi po dito, Others were perplexed and amazed, but verse 13, some however made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Yung iba, pinagtawanan sila. Para nung Sunday, para tayong mga ewan, di ba? Lumilipan. Marahil yung iba, you know, they would be Anong nagawa ng church na to? ba? Or we are talking about ascending. Kausapin mo yung friend mo, anong pinagsasabi nitong ascending? Many people will not understand. Mga baliw, anong ascending, ascending? Hello, tingnan mo nga. Tingnan nyo ang, ang nangyayari. The inflation, how can you say that the breakthrough will come? Kagagaling natin sa pandemic. There's so many problems na ating kinakaharap and there is war everywhere. There is trade war everywhere. Pastora, saan naman yung ascending dyan? And did you know that the world is expecting that the economy, the whole wild world economy will come down this year? Pero narito ang mga 611. Oh, it's a year of ascending! We believe the economy will rise up. We will get rich. We will experience breakthrough. But you see, if you look in the media and the reports of the world, People are expecting the economy to go down more and more. But it doesn't and it will never change the word of God because the word of God is real. And that we need to have that faith to really hold on to that. And you see Peter, when he received the Holy Spirit, ano pong nangyari kay Peter? Yung leader ng kaduwagan. Yung leader na three times in-ignore or in-abandon ang Painong Yesus. Sabi po dito, when the people questioned and mocked them, Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Yung Peter na natatakot, yung Peter na bumalik na lang sa pam pam pamimingwit, he began to stand, he began to speak. Nakaroon po siya ng boldness to rise up in the midst of it, their lowly point. And not just him, but the 11 disciples with him. They all rise up. And what did Peter say? He addressed the crowd. He says, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. The people are not drunk. As you suppose, it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, as the Spirit of God will be poured out to everyone, they will experience these wonderful things. Some will see visions. Some will prophesy. Some will experience and perform wonders. This is the word of God. 
Yun yung sinasabi po ni Peter suddenly. He has and understood the word of God. Suddenly, the word of God has a meaning in his life. And there are times in our lives, basta ng, ba basta ng Bible, wala namang effect. Yung iba nga sa atin, napagod na lang. Ate, parang wala naman ako nare-receive. Nakatulugan ko ang magbasa ng Bible. If we have this problem, we need to ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you know, si Peter, nung nagtatago siya, nakalimutan niya na ang mga salita ng Panginoon. But when the Holy Spirit, he suddenly remembers the book of Joel. He remembers. Ah, ito na yung sinasabi ng Panginoon. That everyone will rise up as they receive the Spirit of God. You know, when, when Peter begins to rise up, and it also means ascend, he, he stood up. He had that courage. What did he do? He began to testify the power of God. He did not just say, na ito yung word ng Panginoon, but he began to say with boldness. Look, verse 22. Fellow Israelites, sabi niya, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you with the help of wicked men put him to death. By nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him. I want you to look at this part of the chapter. Suddenly, Peter begins to confront these people. He began to testify about Jesus. And he says, Jesus, whom you persecuted, whom you killed, Eh, parang, nung, parang nung kahapon lang, nagtatago siya, di ba? And then suddenly, he spoke to testify about Jesus. Such boldness, such courage. He received it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he began to speak and testify about God, about Jesus, sa harap ng lahat ng mga taong ito. He began to say, pinatay niyo si Jesus. Alam niyo yun? Kaya ba, kaya ba natin sabihin yun? To confront and to be direct? No. But Peter had that courage. He had that courage. And he said, you know, Jesus whom you killed was never dead. It was the plan of the Father to give him to you. Pero yung akala niyong kamatayan niya, Yung akala nyo natalo nyo ang Panginoong Jesus. But this was actually the reason why He ascended in heaven. He says it. Yung pagpatay nyo sa Kanya, akala nyo kinatuwa at kina, kinadagdag sa inyo. No. But actually, it's part of the great plan. His descent on the death is actually the beginning of the ascension of the glory of God. And the same is true in our lives. You know, minsan akala natin yung failures natin, minsan akala po natin yung hirap na ating kinakaharap ngayon, that's the, the end of everything. But no, the year says it is ascending 2023. We can never ascend unless we really experience and acknowledge we are in our lowest part of our lives. But just like Jesus ascended to heaven and ascended to life, it's same true with us. Even death can never put us down. Even death in our marriages, death in our physical sickness, maybe death ng ating mga, mga pananampalataya, death marahil yung wala na tayong gana, sabi ng, ng ating nag, mga nag-power ministry. Death in many things. Yung lahat ng ininvesan mo, ako parang mararimata lang. Ako parang lahat makukunin na lang. Parang walang nangyari. It seems lahat ng inefortan mo, nothing is growing from it. And we are so discouraged. But in here, Peter is saying, not even these kinds of deaths 
can stop the people of God to arise. Why? Jesus has shown it to us. Jesus exemplify, ipinakita ng Panginoon na maging ang kamatayan, it cannot keep the people of God. It cannot keep Jesus. And he, be, he continued to say twice. Verse 32, God has raised this Jesus to life. God has raised this Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of him. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and it is the same Spirit that is poured out to men. It is the same Spirit, sabi po dito in verse 35, poured out what you now see and hear. And what is that Spirit? It is the Spirit of life. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, it is the spirit of life. And it is the same spirit that is in you today. It's the same spirit that is in you today. You know, Jesus ascended to heaven. He ascended from death. And same spirit that we also received this year. And so there is no reason na tayo po ma-discourage parang yung year of ascending para sa iba lang. Parang napaka-imposible mapangyari sa buhay ko. Even the people around you will tell that. But in the eyes of faith, as the Spirit of God is poured in our lives, we will rise with Him. We will rise with Jesus. But how can we ascend? Not second point, ascend to testify God's power. Do you believe God will really raise you up? God will really allow you to experience this? Gusto ba natin itong mapangyari? O ba ba? Ayaw nyo pala? Akin na lang. Di ba? Let's not preach about Are we excited to ascend this year? Amen. Di ba? Pero what is the very motive of our ascension? If we really want to ascend, we need to understand why God wants us to ascend. Peter rise up and rose up testify the power of God. You know why God wants you to ascend? Because God wants you to become a testimony of His power. God wants the world to see that the children of God, God will raise them up. God is able to bless them. And same is true sa ating buhay. Why do we want to ascend? Uy, ngayon magyayaman na pala ako. Naku, papakayaman ako. To ascend is not just for us to enjoy the world. But it is to testify the glory of God. Do we want to ascend? When you begin to include God, Lord, I want, you know, I want to get rich so I can do more for your kingdom. Lord, I really want you to rise within me so I can rise up for the work of your glory. Lord, I want to testify of your goodness. It's not just for us to get rich. It's not just about us being promoted in our lives. But even your ascension, even your promotion, God has a reason. God has a purpose in it. Na kung tayo ang pangarap lang natin mag-ascend para yumaman, ang hirap. But when we begin to see according to the eyes of faith, Lord, alam nyo natutuwa ako, in the cell group we had, I asked them, what do you want na itataas ng Panginoon sa'yo? And many of them choose the right answer. It is their relationship sa Panginoon. And they really want, you know, na mag-rise up. Not just, not just on the finances, but that God will be glorified in their lives. And I feel so touched. So even our lives, ano yung pangarap mo this year? Yumaman lang ba? O medyo matagal pa yan? Okay? Pero when we begin to say, Lord, I want na ipromote mo ako, Lord. Bigyan mo ko malaki sa sakyan para meron kami yung pangsundo. Di ba? Lord, bigyan mo ako ng more ability so I can disciple. Give me more time. Yung iba sa atin, gusto natin ng pahinga. Para sa ng pahinga? Pag-social media, o oh, hindi tayo bibigyan. Yeah? 
But when we begin to ask right things, Lord, bigyan mo nga ako boyfriend. Para saan anak? Para may masabing may boyfriend ka? O maganda ka at hindi ka pangit? Mali yung motivation natin, yeah? But pag sinabi, Lord, bigyan mo ako boyfriend because I really want to enter in that glorious marriage. I want to have a partner to serve with you. I want to have a partner to enjoy yung blessings na binigay mo sa akin. Nako, agad-agad yan. Di ba? But sometimes we just don't know how to ask. Sometimes we don't know what we want. But you see, include God. Peter, Peter testified. When he ascended, when he stood up, kasama niya ang Panginoon, and he began to testify about God. Your ascending, what it is for? What is your dreams for? What is our desire for? Today, God is saying to us, we need to ascend to testify the goodness and the power of God in our lives. Alam nyo, isang bagay na, na, na naisip ko, even yung death ng mama namin, uh, sabi niya noon, noong nagpapaalam niya sa akin na hindi ko tinatanggap, sabi niya, anak, I have to leave and I'm going to die. Ayaw kong tanggapin. Ma, hindi, hindi. Alam niyo ang sabi niya kasi sa akin, when I die, this is to glorify the Lord. If I live, it is not giving glory to God. If I only live because I want to live, ngayon ko siya naiintindihan. Bakit sabi niya, tanggap niyang mawala siya? Because she knew the very reason why she has to die. And when she died, the many miracles happened in our lives. It is only then that we realize that we've been relying to our mom and she is no longer giving glory to God. At yung pagiging, yung buhay niya, he, she did not ask for life para lang makasama kami. No. But she knew the reason why she has to die. And these are things, even Jesus have to die so that po the purpose of God will be experienced by each one of us. And so, nandun po, alam niyo yun, yung nag-ascend. So even in our lives, what do we want? Do we want God to be glorified in our lives or we just simply want us to experience the world and to enjoy the world. But, you know, when we ascend for the glory of God, God will surely be with us. And He will accomplish it. And you know, after these things, after Peter testified and be revealed the glory of God's ascension to the people, alam nyo po, nung nag-testify at nag-preach po siya, ano po ang effect? Verse 36. Verse 37. This is our third and last point. Sabi niya, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do? By the preaching of the word, the people were convicted. These people were actually devotees. They came to Jerusalem to worship God. Pero hindi nila alam na yung pinatay nila, He was God. Amen? And they were cut to the heart. Na-convict po sila. Na, parang kami yun. Kami nga yun. And these people begin to ask, what should we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And sabi po ni Peter, you need to repent and be baptized. So, so makita po natin na yung, yung breakthrough, hindi lang po na-experience ng mga disciples ng mga panahon na yun, but even the people who saw and witnessed the work of the Holy Spirit, when the disciples of God begin to testify, they also receive yung conviction. And he says, they need to repent. 
Bakit po itong sinabi ng na, ni, ni Peter? Because many of them, na mapanood na yun, though they were devotees of God, they were living in darkness. They do not actually have the true relationship sa Panginoon. They thought they've done God a good thing when they killed Jesus because they think Jesus is an abomination. Jesus is a blasphemer. Pero hindi po nila alam, siya na pala yung kanilang sinasamba. And so Peter began to preach to them. And these people receive the word and many of them Sabi po dito, Peter said to them, repent and be baptized. Because many of them cannot ascend also. Because they're living in darkness. They, they are living in sin. But sabi ni Peter dito, for them to also experience the same thing. For them to also receive the Holy Spirit. For them to also ascend. They need to repent. They need to turn away from their old things. They need to turn away from the works, the ungodly past, turn away from their sin and begin to ascend from it and repent sa Panginoon. And so, nag, nagsimula po na sila nagkaroon ng platform for preaching. And so what happened? The people also experienced. They repented. And sabi po dito, 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000. But during those times, they were minorities. During those times, they didn't have the power. Bakit? Kukunti sila. Pero grabbing evangelism na nangyari. For just a day, 3,000 people knew God, knew Jesus. They were being baptized. And this is what powerful work the Holy Spirit can do sa ating buhay. As we ascend, God is able to do it. At hindi lang po siya ascending na konting pag-ascend, but we can advance powerfully because the Spirit of God is among us. And no matter what kind of weakness that we have, when the church is ano, nag-breakthrough in the Spirit, we can rise up and to do a lot of things and greater things. And that's the beginning of the birth of the early church. The church, there was no church in the beginning. But the church was being built and it was being built up because the Holy Spirit came. And the people na ginamit po ng Panginoon, they are lowly people. They are fishermen. They are lost they are discouraged. They are unable. But when the Spirit of God came and descended to them, they rise up and they ascend and they begin to bring the great revival in the land. For just a day, have you ever seen that? 3,000 men got baptized. E sa church na lang natin, ang hirap-hirap. Lord, isang Sunday, matuwa tayo pag may isang tao. Nadarating. Diba? But imagine what power, how God can raise up our church when the Spirit is with us. God can do more. God can do more. Na nag-uusap kami ni Marisa while we were talking about the finance of the church. Alam niyo, great thing and we thank God. Sabi nga niya, nag four times. Yung, yung, yung ating finance ng church. And we see that four times nag-multiply ang pananampalataya ng bawat isa. Yeah? And this is, we are already ascending. But this year is greater. Yung sabi namin, oh, nag-four times tayo. Pero one-third pa rin ng expense natin. At goal unmet pa rin tayo, di ba? Kaya pala sinabi ng Panginoon, today is still ascending. Rise up! Hindi tayo makontento na okay, Lord. Eh, lahat ng mga nag-breakthrough. There is more things to come. Imagine when we grow in the Spirit, we grow in number, we grow in faith. What more we can do? Nako takot na takot na ang kaaway sa atin. Imagine nyo, this anointing, the Word of God says, the glory of the latter rain is greater than the former rain. If in one day they be able to reach out for 3,000, what more in our time? Only if we knew what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives. This year is a year of ascending. But the most important 
thing is first, no, the we need to ascend in the spirit. The goal is not of how much strategy we do, not on how much investment we do. Kung anong mga work, sige, magdala ko, damihan ko, work ko. No. But first is, first, the priority is that we ascend in the spirit. Amen? Not that we try to do a lot in the ministry, but this time, it's more on the spirit. How we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And you will come to see breakthrough upon breakthrough. Alam nyo pa? Yung matindi, if we read until the last verse of chapter 2, sabi po dito, they begin to devote themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and they sold, verse 45, they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had needed it. What does it mean? Those people, grabe yung transformation ng mind nila. They're no longer pursuing much of the things of the world, but they become one with Jesus. Hindi na po sila slave ng work nila. They're not slave on how much money they have in the bank. They were not slave on how much they have, but they have the fullness of joy sa Panginoon, and they are able to share it. They were, hindi na po sila bound sa pamantayan ng mundo. But they get to enjoy everything together. And this is the transformation of God. When we have the Holy Spirit, we receive the anointing of ascending. And we can break through the land. Break through even po sa mga difficult things sa ating buhay. It seems like we cannot free ourselves from sin. But when we have the Holy Spirit, we can break through. It seems na wala na pong pag-asa. But when the Holy Spirit comes, life will thrive. Life will be birthed and we will birth fruit. And you know, hindi lang po tayong mag ascend Everybody will ascend. Even the things that we pray for, even their family. But first, the first people who needs to ascend, sabihin mo ako, because we are the church. Remember, Psalm 47 says, it is when the people of the nations come to the people of God. And who are the people of God? The church. The land and your family can never experience revival unless you as the church will break through. Unless you, the church, will ascend. Okay, okay, na gusto natin kasama ang family natin. Kaya pa nga natin pangutang ang family Para lang lahat tayo ma-breakthrough sama-sama. Yan ang Pinoy, di ba? Sama-sama, together. But, we need to first think, we as the children of God, first fix our relationships sa Panginoon. We are the first ones to ascend first. There and then, the blessing will flow. Hindi natin kailangang hugutin sila. Because ang paghugot sa kanila, it is the man's effort. Amen? But when we ascend and the Spirit of God is upon us, this will attract all the blessings and the grace of God for our family. If our heart is right to God, alam niyo po, lahat ng nasa iyo, it will follow. But first is us. We need the desire for the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so are we ready? Are we ready more than anything more than the plans that we do, more than the strategies and financial plans na meron na po tayo sa ating mga isip, desire to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Once we ascend in the Spirit, we will ascend in the physical things in our lives. Amen? Lahat ng bagay na nininanais natin, your job, your future, first, be made right. Have the right relationship sa Panginoon. And you know, all the things will be added unto you. You know, I remember the first time I received the Holy Spirit. It was a time when Pastor Joshua first visited the Philippines. I desire the power of the Holy Spirit ng matagal. But it was that first time that I really received the Holy Spirit tangibly. And nung nung 
nilay hands niya po ako. I, I was nobody in the church. I was a mere youth nung mga panahon, I was high school. And there was this camp sa church. And sabi dun, if you want the Holy Spirit, I want you to come and receive it. And with faith, I came. But on those times, I was a nobody. Yung pangarap ko lang po talaga noon, umaman. That's, that's it. I wanna take my family out from poverty. But it was on the time when I came on the stage and I received the Holy Spirit. I lose my strength. Dun ko na experience talaga yun. That was the beginning of all the transformation in my life. Is the beginning on how God changed my mindset. Dati gusto ko lang mag-abroad din. Gusto ko mag-abroad. Because that is what our, you know, the world tells us. Mag-abroad ka. This is a green pasture. They can, they, you cannot receive that in the Philippines. This is all our mindset. As a Filipino, that's why Filipinos are number one in terms of migration and going abroad. At isa din po ako But on that time when I received the power of the Holy Spirit, that is the time I began to receive the burden for the Philippines. The burden to rise up. Lord, hindi pwedeng ang pang-asa namin ay pag abroad That's when I realized that the hope is not going to any place. But it's about the blessing of God coming to you. It is not chasing. Sabi nila, chase your dreams. Work hard for your dreams. This is how the world tells us. But you know, the Holy Spirit enabled the disciples ng mga na yun to do what they were able to do. The nations come to them. It is not no longer them going to the nations. It is the nations coming to them. And you know, nakita po po yan sa mother church natin sa Hong Kong. Everyone is craving for the word. So we spend time, we spend our money, we go there and be discipled. And this is what true blessing is. It is not about chasing. It's not about doing so much. It's a physical and man's own strength. But when the Spirit of God will come, it will change the way we see things. And the way of God is the best way in the world. See the disciples experience it. They didn't have a mass crusade. Hindi po sila nag-hire ng matinding performers. Or they had a, a great speaker to win the 3,000 souls on that day. They just ascended. They received the Holy Spirit. And they rise up. They just did what they have to do. And the souls who touches the hearts of the people, it is the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God. Same thing in our lives today. We have a lot of plans, amen. We have a lot of dreams. But for us to realize all these things, it is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so tonight, let us all stand and let us rise up. As we open our hearts today, this is the truth. As spiritual people and as people of faith, we don't rely on our own strength. We don't rely on what the world says. But it is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God that we rely on. As we wait, as we desire, the Lord says the Spirit is the power. The Holy Spirit will come and will give you the power to witness. To witness, to testify the goodness of God. And we cannot testify the goodness of God unless God will raise us up. And yes, you are the very testimony of the glory of God. And today, let us just decide for the Spirit. Sigh for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit come in power. Change my heart that I do live for you, my God. Let your Spirit
this song. Let us sing it from our hearts and desire and desire for the Spirit to come and fall. Oh, Holy Spirit, come in power. your spirit father that can renew restore it is your spirit that will arise arise oh father that we can soar we need your spirit tonight and not by might not by power not by strength but only by your spirit and so I am Ask for the power of the Spirit to come right now in our knees. Yes, Jesus, as your children await and as we hold on to your word, oh God, you said you shall send the Spirit in the last days. God, you will pour out the Spirit in all flesh. And every man, every woman, is slave and free. Lord, you will pour out your Spirit on young men and old people. Lord, you will pour out your Spirit. And so, Lord God, today as your church, Lord, we cry out for your Spirit. Let us just sing in the Spirit right now as we come and desire and as we yearn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
to the children is it impossible that we experience it today it is not but a man who came to Israel on those times they asked Peter brothers what shall we do the Lord says and through Peter he says repent and be baptized Every one of us, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins. Today, as we desire for the Spirit of God to come, the Spirit is looking for a vessel. 
But what kind of vessels do we have? Are our vessels full or our vessels empty? Maybe our lives, our vessels are full with a lot of things in the world. A lot of things in the flesh. We may be filled with a lot of worries. We'll be a filled with a lot of our own strategies. But today the Spirit of God wants to come to you. But God wants us to empty ourselves. To believe that it is through the Spirit. There are times we cannot let go of our human strengths, our human mentality, and the mindset of the world. And so the Spirit cannot move, cannot freely move in our lives. Many times the Spirit is knocking in our hearts. But we as a people of God, we just remain professional. But today is the time we surrender everything. Let go of things and allow the Spirit of God to come. God is looking for a vessel. Maybe today our vessel is, we think it is small. It seems like a vessel is not enough to contain what the Spirit of God will do to us. But today God says, I'm pouring my Spirit in all flesh. And many of you here are called, but some of us are resisting that calling. But today as we open our hearts, God will pour out His Spirit and He will make us accomplish. He will allow us to see all these things. And so today, let us continue to desire. Even in your life, you maybe feel there is the spirit of death in your life, in your health, in your relationship. But today, as we lift our heads, we ask the Spirit of God to bring life. We ask the Spirit of God to bring life. Even in your relationship, your spiritual relationship with God, your relationship with your husband and wife, Maybe in your work, maybe even in your ministry, even in your cell group, you want the Spirit of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to come, transform, change life. You let your ministry, your cell group to experience this power. And the Lord says, He is going to add up thousands and thousands and thousands upon your life, whether it be in your finances, whether it be gifts, whether it be in your relationship, add up, add up more love, more love. Even, even in your ministry, even in your cell group, you may have been uh, looking down in your cell group. We never multiply. But today God says He's going to pour out the Spirit and you will testify. You will begin to preach the good news and He will raise up this church to speak the word of God and as you speak as a vessel of the Lord people will come people will come and receive Jesus and if you want to be used by God in this I want you to lift your hands and surrender everything and we begin to Lord commit ourselves unto you God we understand the calling that you have given us as one church you have chosen us among many just like Peter and the disciples on those times. They were few in number. They were powerless. They felt defeated. They themselves need empowerment. But even from that point of their lives, you have called them and you said, they will disciple the nation. And Lord God, is the same thing we are now today. You call us to disciple the nations. So no matter what kind of situation that we are in, whatever environment that we are living in right now, or whatever state of life that we are in, God, we just hold on and grab hold of your promise that you are going to use us to be a testimony of your word. We will all ascend, oh God. This is to proclaim that our God has ascended. Our God can do miracles in the lives and even the lives of other people and that you will cause life. 
Lord, for everyone. You will bring life for everyone. And so, Lord God, I pray today, we give to you our lives and we commit to you our lives. Use us, anoint us to be like that of Peter, that we will ascend, we will arise to become the testimony of your good ways, of your goodness in our lives, and that as people will see us, as people will hear us, oh God, they will come to receive you, they will come to know you, and they will receive salvation in their lives. And yes, you are able to use us, Lord, to preach your word in our family, to preach your word in our marketplaces, so that God, day by day, people will come to receive you. Day by day, we see miracles happening. Day by day, Lord, you will surprise us with new things, oh God, and you will be able to break through the land, break through wherever we are. And so, Lord God, we thank you, and I release the blessing upon everyone who is lifting their hands today as they stand in faith and in hope. Lord, may you truly pour the power of your spirit in their lives to consume all our negative mindset, to consume Panginoon lahat ng mga bagay na naghihinder po sa amin na tumayo at tumaas at ikaw ay mag-glorify. And the beginning today, this life will be set apart for your glory. We are the church. And as a church, we are head above all. And that God, this authority that you have given us, we will use it as we go out in the world. And God, we know all the things that we do. It will be blessed because you have given us the power, you have given us the authority, and you have given us, oh God, this ability to do it. Lord, I thank you that may we continue, Father, to glorify you in everything that we do as we continue to dream, to ascend. God, you are with us, and we are including you, oh Lord, and your kingdom. And that, Panginoon, sa aming pong pag-achieve ng bawat pangarap, na bawat pagtaas na meron kami. Lord, we know it is all because of you. And so allow us that in everything that we accomplish in life, Lord, may you alone be glorified. May you alone be magnified, O Lord God. At sa iyo nga po namin binabalik ang lahat ng papuri, lahat ng pasasalamat sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Sabi natin sa katabi natin, Let us receive and use the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let us begin to testify. Amen. Allow the works of the Holy Spirit to be seen. Amen. Wag nating hayaan na may stop. But we use and we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. God bless po. And let us just give thanks sa Panginoon and glorify God on the victory that He has given us. Hallelujah.